can be examples to follow, um, and kind of the importance of being an example to follow. Because, I mean, we live in a world of, you know, examples of everything, of different lifestyles, of uh, different, you know, preferences of whatever. It can be, you know, like movies you like, it can be the songs you listen to, all that kind of stuff. And we have examples of kind of what is popular, what's not popular, all this kind of stuff. We get bombarded with it every day. What is, is that me? What is it? Oh, okay. Never mind. Anyways, trying to get me off track. But um, the uh, Sunday I had, uh, just during the middle of uh, pastor's message, um, if you guys turn your Bibles to Acts 2.17, um, this scripture popped in my mind, um, and it kind of helped me focus, focus my message. You guys there? Cool. Um, so I'm reading out of the Amplified, and it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, telling forth the divine counsels, and your young men shall see visions, divinely granted appearances, and your older men shall dream divinely suggested dreams. We read that, we get all excited, right? Because it sounds like all good and, and you know, woohoo, we're doing stuff, you know? We're having dreams, we're having visions, people are going to, you know, change the world, God's moving, all this kind of stuff. But do, how, I feel a lot of us don't see it happening in our own lives. We hear about it and we see it happening in other people's lives, but we don't see it happening in our lives. And, you know, it can kind of be as, <laughs> as much as it's meant to be inspirational and, and, uh, lift you up and encourage you, it can be disappointing and depressing because you're not seeing it. And you're like, well, how come I can't participate in that? Like, how come everyone else gets to? I'm coming to church just like them. All the excuses we always say. And what it comes down to is where you are in your relationship with God. Because God is always in action. God is always moving. His spirit is always never still. It's never stagnant, anything like that. We, our flesh, is stagnant. We sit. We kind of just stop. We put on the brakes. We want to take a rest. We want to have a relaxation, whatever it is. And when we do that, imagine you're driving. No, it's not driving. Imagine you're running with someone, and you guys are talking. If that other person starts running faster than you, it's going to be harder to hear them, right? And eventually, they're going to either get so far ahead of you, or more likely, we're going to get so far behind them, we're not going to know what they're saying. You can't continue the conversation. That's basically what happens. God is still talking, but we're not keeping up with him. And so we can't hear him. And so these visions, and it says right there, it says divinely granted appearances. It says, so it's not like our own dreams of like, ooh, I'm about to make the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich today. Like, I really don't think God told you to make the best peanut butter and jelly sandwich today. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's our own, like, fleshly desire. That's, those are our cardinal dreams. And if we don't have those godly visions, it's because we're not keeping up with God, because we're not keeping up our relationship with him. And it's, for me, it's something that I always was taught was, I mean, from Children's Church up, it was like have a relationship with God. Like that's how you learn the Bible is by having a relationship with God. Like that's how we were taught the Bible. That's how we understood the Bible. It wasn't like, you know, it, it was more than just memorize the memory verse. It was like memorize the memory verse, but like apply it. And how does it apply to you? And I've had, so I'm blessed to have had that ever since I came here when I was like four or five, whatever it was. And so I've kind of always had that mentality and had that understanding of the importance of relationship with God. And the biggest reason I have that is because, number one, because a pastor, because he has a relationship with God. And then the people that he put in place in, uh, you know, those, if you want to call them departments, departments that were also, that also had a relationship with God that taught me the same thing. And they shared the same vision, which 
the Bible also says my people perish for lack of vision. And when you don't have God's vision, and when you don't have the vision of, like, our church, it makes it extremely hard to understand what the heck is going on here sometimes. Because trust me, I was at that point. I had that point when I was, like, being retarded and rebellious in youth, when I was trying to prove a point by not going. Like, I was boycotting or something. For some, It was stupid. But I didn't have the same vision as them. I was like, I don't agree with that. I don't, that's not what I think. That's not how I feel. And therefore, I don't participate. And whether you explicitly say that, see, at least I had the sense about myself to say it, so I knew I could change it. Most of us don't even say it. Like, we don't even take the time to figure out what it is we're actually saying when we're saying something. Like, we don't read beneath our own lines, in between our own lines. We just say things and then think that that's as far as it goes, is two feet in front of us. And we don't realize, like, I mean, the Bible says your words are very important. And there's emphasis all the time on, like, shutting your mouth and listening, thinking before you speak, all this. And we quote it to try and tell other people because they're annoying us, like, you should think before you speak, or all this kind of stuff because we want to try and, you know, make ourselves feel better. We want to try and put other people down so we don't have to focus on our problems, all this kind of stuff. Everything we're doing is not focusing on our relationship with God. And here's the thing, other people see that. And other people mimic you, whether you realize it or not. See, that was something that for like the longest time I hated was people copying me. Like that just drove me crazy. I was like, oh my God, be yourself. Like stop trying to be like me. Like it's so annoying. But for good and for bad, people copied me. And I mean, I can see like looking back, I saw the like effect that I had on youth and having that rebellious spirit. I was the only one kicked out, but it's not like no one was talking to me. I mean, people are still talking to me, and, you know, then I'm not, I never said, like, oh, you know, screw Charlie, screw Pastor, whatever. I never said that, but my actions said it. I never explicitly said it, but I was feeling it, and so whenever they came around, it was kind of, you know, turn the cold shoulder, walk faster the other direction, suddenly get a phone call, my phone's not even on, all this, you know, all these excuses to try and get away from the problem. And I realize, ne- I mean, especially over like the past like few months, I've had, because I'm no longer doing that, because I focus on my relationship with God, and because I have, I mean, like Vanessa said, we always have to be, it's always every day working on something new, uh, changing something. We're, we're, you know, we're never, we never get to the point. That's not going to happen yet. And so, but I understand the importance of doing it and, and keeping that relationship and keep working at it, even if it seems like I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to be like, make an excuse, be like, oh, well, I guess, you know, in God's time. Because that, I feel, is one of the worst excuses to be lazy that I see Christians have. I, honestly, anyone have. I see other people, well, I've done all the work. I'm just waiting for an opportunity. And Look, if an opportunity's not coming, make an opportunity, okay? Um, and I've had, I've had to do that, like, in school, and I'm glad I have that principle. Because, and because of that, I've been, like, so much more successful in school because my school, I went there originally, and I was like, cool, you're going to teach me everything I want to know. Any question I have, they're going to have the answer for, and I was completely wrong. I was like, do you people know anything? Like, I mean, I don't know anything, but I'm asking you, and you're telling me you don't know. Like, how do you think that makes me feel, right? How do you think that makes someone else feel when they ask you about God, and you should know, and you don't? Or you come up with some garbage answer, some, some you know, you try to, excuse my language, BS your way through it, and then what? Now you have someone who is just as messed up as you are, if not more, because now they have already a lack of understanding, and then your confused interpretation of it. And you're just screwing people up left and right. And we're screwing each other up left and right because we're not holding each other accountable for it. We're not, and more importantly, we're not holding ourselves accountable for it. We're not doing, like Sister Rowena talked about it. She said doing check-ins, doing, you know, checking in with yourself. And I tell people that all the time, is like, check in with yourself. Like, what is going on in your life? And, and where is God moving in your life? And if he's not, 
what are you doing to stop him from moving? And I mean, that's a really important question to ask yourself. Like, what are you doing to stop him from moving? Because God isn't going to, uh, it, uh, like, insert his will over you. We have free will. If we don't want him to move, he won't move. He wants to, but if we don't want him to, he's going to respect our decision not to. I mean, but just understand, like, the detriment you're doing to yourself. And this all, like, it's very important to understand it's not just ourselves, it's other people. Like, there are other people that are relying on us to get it together. There is an entire world out there relying on us to get it together. And like I said, over the past few months, that's become, like, really relevant because I've had friends that know I go to church, that you know, they know I've been going since I was six. I'm not, you know, hush-hush about it, anything like that. But at the same time, I'm not, like, shoving it down their throats. But they know that I'm there if they need it. And, you know, I'm being consistent. I'm not saying I go to church and then acting differently. And then, you know, like, if someone said that, I wouldn't trust them. If someone said they went to church and then I needed, like, serious life advice and they were doing the same things I was, I'd be like, I don't think you have any advice to give. You're doing the same exact things I'm doing, so I don't get it. And I've had friends over the past two months that have, like, come to me, and I was like, I mean, I was taken back because I was like, finally. I mean, for one, finally. But two, I was just, like, extremely blessed because I, I see other people, you know, they're bringing in people to church, and I'm like, dang, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, you know, I'm up here, I'm talking on Wednesdays, and I do stuff with the youth, and, like, I don't bring no people in, all this kind of stuff. But that didn't stop me from focusing on my relationship with God and being ready to, when that call was there, answer it. And I've been able to answer it, and it just, like, extremely blessed me, and I was, you know, like, it makes it now, like, that much more important to me to focus on my relationship with God because I understand that I'm an example for others to follow, because the in First Corinthians eleven one it says, "Follow me as I follow Christ." Now, here's I think where we miss it. It's as I follow Christ. A lot of times we find someone to follow because they sound like they're saying good stuff. They sound like they're giving good advice, and it's cool for a minute. But then it starts to kind of veer off track, and we continue to follow them because we trust them. Because instead of seeking God for ourselves. We're just hoping to ride on their coattails. Like, you have to understand, your walk with God is both personal and communal. You have to have a personal, strong relationship with God so that you can share with other people, so that you can help other people get their own personal relationship with God. If you don't have your own strong, per like if I go to the gym and I have a trainer who looks like me, I'm not gonna trust him to get me fit. Like, if he says, come on, 10 more, I'm like, you do 10 more. Because I think you need to get it first, buddy. Don't look at me and tell me to do 10 more. If we don't, if, like, we don't, we, see, we want to be like those other people. And we, because we get confused, because we think, oh, well, I'm supposed to be likable. Like, I'm supposed to be personable. I can't be, you know, we hear, don't be overly religious and don't shut people out and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true, but don't be like them. You need to be something they want to aspire to. Like, you need to be the reason that they initially come to church and you get them hooked on God. They need to see your lifestyle as something better. They don't need to see it as something that's marginally this much greater than theirs. Like, because, you know, it's, we, we don't understand that. We can still be, uh, communicate with people. We can still talk to people in the world. We can have friends that, Maybe don't come to God, but if they are, like, so opposite of your lifestyle, you shouldn't be with them and stop trying to be like them to get them to relate to you or to relate to them so that you can say, now come with me to church. Because when they come with you to church, if they come with you to church, you probably don't even know what's going on. They're going to have a million questions, and you're not going to be able to explain any single one of them because you're, like, been doing the same thing they've been doing to try to get them to like you because you're trying to save one person. Look, if they don't want to be saved, don't worry about it. It's obviously not yours. That's obviously not your person to save. So stop trying to save. So quit trying to be a superhero. Okay? Move on to the next person. And that doesn't mean 
totally abandon them and say, well, forget you, you're stubborn, you're hard-headed. No, pray for them. Pray God send someone their way that can get to them. Because obviously you couldn't. But, that, but if you're consistent enough, you plant a seed that when they see the next person, they're like, okay, it wasn't just one in a hundred. It wasn't just a fluke. There's other people out there that are believing the same thing, that are just as committed as that guy was. Maybe we didn't get along on the same level, whatever, but this guy gets me. This guy I can talk to. Like, at the TOD rallies, I can't talk to those biker dudes. It's just not going to happen. I mean, I almost tonight wore the shorts that I wore on Sunday. Like, but I was like, I better not, because in case I walk out from behind the podium, the Ustream is going to turn off. So I said, let me wear some jeans. Because I would, because, I mean, I'm hot right now, and I want to be comfortable. And, you know, but that's, like, see, I'm, I'm okay with that. But if I try to go up to a dude on a motorcycle and be like, hey, can I talk to you real quick about Jesus? He's going to run me over. Like, he don't, he don't care what I have to say because I don't fit his mold. I don't fit into his thing. And that's okay. I'm fine with that. But when someone happens to be there, when someone happens to look like me or happens to do the same things as me or whatever, if I'm thinking, well, because I go to the church where everyone rides a motorcycle and a majority of our congregation has a motorcycle and yada, 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 then why should I even bother trying to bring people in? Like, why should I even bother trying to bring people to God? Why not? Because, I mean, if the people on the motorcycles are the only ones coming in, then you know those are the only people that are actively going out there and talking to people about God. So bring more people in so there's a more diverse people here. So you have more people like you to talk to. So you have more people that share the same interests as you. So you don't feel like you have to, because I mean, that's, that, I think that's like one of our biggest things. We start looking at other people and we feel like, oh my God, I have to conform to everyone else. Like people ask me all the time, are you going to get a bike? And I'm like, probably not. Why not? I don't really like motorcycles. I like cars. I like to drive a car. I like to have four of the people in the car with me and talk to them. I like to talk. How am I going to do that on the motorcycle? I'm going to have to yell, which I'm fine with, but I'm, hey, hey, I'm not doing that. I'm going to drive a car, and I can look good in a car, and I can get to people in a car, because I'm sure there's a million other people out there that are like, yeah, motorcycles are cool, but they're not for me. So, and here's the thing, you are in a church that's not going to stop you from doing, from enjoying the things that you enjoy. Like, you have to understand that, because that's one of, like, the greatest things that I've always loved about being here that I never even really knew until I went to other churches. I honestly, because, well, I take that back. There was one other church we went to before here that I just remember I was, I don't know, they probably thought I was demon-possessed or something because I was just, like, that ruckus. I just, I could see the look on, like, my parents' faces. I could feel the eyes. I was, I was just making noise and being disruptive and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, not that I was able to get away with it here, but we weren't criticized for me being like a four-year-old. Like, what do you expect four-year-olds to do when they're in a church and everyone's talking about things they don't understand? You really think they're going to sit there and pay attention? No, they're not. And we constantly, constantly, constantly want people, we want to like be like other people so we feel like we can relate to them. And you you need to be the example to follow. Like, you need to really understand that. You need to get that in your spirit. Like, when Jesus was walking on the earth, he went around, and, he, and you see all throughout the Bible, they were inspired, and they always say something about oh, how he's different, how he stands out, how he did this and not this. Like, that's what drew people to him, was because he wasn't trying to be like the people he was trying to save. He was trying to say to the people he was trying to save, come be like me. This is where you're saved. This is where you're better. This is how you get out if you follow me, if you, be, if you do the things I do. And we say that and we, you know, I feel like some of us probably do believe it, but we don't act it. And it can be kind of hard sometimes, I understand, because, like I said, I went through it. It's hard to try and live that life. And it's only hard when you're not focused on God. Like, that's, that, see, that's the thing we, we hear. We hear, it's so easy, it's not difficult. You're right, it's so easy, it's not difficult. The problem is, I mean, pastor's been talking about this on Sunday, is your perception of things. 
Like, you're not focused on the right thing. You're not looking at the right thing. Your, your mind, you're trying to think about God with your natural mind. You're trying to understand God with your natural mind, and you can't. Like, I think that's always been one of the reasons why I'm able to understand things really quickly is because I don't think about it with, like, my mind initially. I try and understand it through, if this person was saying this, how are they thinking? It helps me understand what they're saying. You got to read the Bible the same way. How is God thinking? I need God's thinking in order, to understand what he's, in order to understand what he's saying. And when you have God's thinking, you then understand everyone else's thinking. He gives you revelation about everyone else's thinking. You can hear when people say something, you can hear what they actually mean. And that's why I'm saying I can see that we say it and we clap and we cheer and all this kind of stuff when we hear of uh, you know, Acts 2.17, he's going to pour out his spirit, and we get all excited, but we don't really believe it's going to happen in our life, and you can see that on people. If you are, like, in tune with the spirit, you can see that. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, because I can't. I can't explain it to you. You just have to get it, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, get it, and then when you see it, I mean, you can have a conversation, because we'll be on the same page, because it's, it's not, like, a tangible thing. You can just tell, like, Parents know this. You can look at your kid, and you know when your kid's dealing with something. You know what's wrong with your kid. And they can tell you till they're blue in the face, nothing's wrong, but you know something is. Because you just know. That's the same when you, and you know what it is? It's, it's not a tangible connection, but it's like a spiritual connection. And you can feel what their spirit is saying. Your spirit is picking up on their spirit is saying. When you're in tune with the spirit, when you have God's thinking, when you are being the example God called you to be, you can see that on other people, and you can see who it is you're supposed to talk to. You can see who it is that needs you to say something. Like Pastor said on Sunday, when he tells you to turn around in the store line and pray for them and say, can I pray for you? Like, you don't even question it. You just do it. I've had experiences like that on BART before, and I mean, it's, I'm telling you, it's early in the morning, I'm commuting. If you get a seat on BART, you do not give it up unless unless it's like an old an old lady otherwise i don't care who comes in what's up should have got here earlier i got the seat that's what it is i you don't understand seats on bar is hot commodity okay and when god tells you go talk to that person on the other end of the train you're just like ah i got 10 more stops no but you got to do it because you don't under, you, like you don't realize until that person opens up to you what they needed. See, that's that's how God tests us. He doesn't say, "Go talk to this person because they're dealing with this, 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 and this, and they need this, this, and this." They say, "Go talk to that person." That's what He says. He says, "Go talk to that person. Go ask for that person. Go ask if that person needs prayer." He doesn't explain what it is because He's not going to guilt trip us into doing it for Him. He's not going to try and get us to, he's not, you know, like, slyly get us to do his will. He, we have free will. If he says go do it and we don't want to, fine. But understand what you're passing up. You are, like, you are not only possibly putting that person, you know, in potential whatever kind of danger you want to call it, but because you didn't bring God to them in that, in whatever way was required of you, that opportunity is now missed, and someone else has to do it. And what if that person doesn't do it? And then the person after them doesn't do it, and the person after them doesn't do it, and after them, and after them, and after them. Eventually, there's going to be run out of people. And you, I, I, Pastor said this on Sunday too. He says we want to, he wants to be the last, the last person God calls on. We may not be the first, and if we're the first, we're going to be the last, because he's not going to let it pass. He's not going to let these, the calling that God puts on him or on the church, or on any one of us, or whatever, to move to someone else, because we're called to do it, because we're going to be the most effective to do it, and you have, like, I mean, God isn't going to have you do something that is going to take you completely out of either where you're comfortable, or where you're even experienced in going, like, I mean, that was one of my things when we went to the Philippines, I was like, I'm ne the closest thing I ever did to that was when we went to the, the youth camp, the, the, the fire camp with the, uh, up in, I don't even know where it is. Yeah. And that was the closest thing I got to speaking to other youth outside of the church. 
that, and I mean, and that was, they weren't even in, it wasn't a church. It was, you know, like a youth correctional facility. That was like the closest thing I got to kind of ever being like a big crowd of young people. And so I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to go to the field. Like, sometimes I can barely speak English. How am I, they don't, you know, they don't speak English. I mean, they do a little bit, but it's not their native language. So I don't know how you can expect me to under, be understood over there. I don't know how you expect me to be effective. But when pastor asked, I remember he asked, he said, he didn't say, uh, like explain what it is we were doing. He didn't say we're going on a mission trip to the Philippines. He said the dates we were going, he said, do you want to go? That was it. And I was like, it's either yes or no. Like, it's not, let me get back to you. It was like, I need to say, yeah, he said, tell me yes or no right now. And I was like, okay, yes. And then he told me, and I was like, holy smokes. I don't know what I said yes to, but I already said yes. I can't back out now. So over that period of time, what I had to do was prepare myself. I had to get even deeper into my relationship with God because I knew going over there that, and this is from what pastors told me and just from what I've seen, that they can sniff you out like that if you're not real. If you don't believe what it is you're saying, they just completely shut down because they know what it, they know it over there. Like they believe, like that's their life. That is what they live. That's what they breathe. That's like what's most important to them. And I was like, I'm not about to go over there and look stupid. There's no way that's going to happen. Like, that is, like, my second biggest pet peeve. First, it's copying me, and then it's second, looking stupid. When I don't intend to. That's, when I intend to look stupid, it's hilarious. When I don't intend to look stupid, I'm just like, ah, that is not cool. That doesn't look good for Freddy. Freddy's not keeping up the image. So, I was like, I'm not going to do that. I need to, I need to have this relationship. And, and it paid off over there. And that was like one of the most inspiring things, but it's paid off even more here because that really challenged me to, like, I was taking it seriously, but I knew I wasn't taking it seriously as I could. And I was like, I'm not just representing me or pastor. I'm representing church. And not only that, but I'm representing God. Like, I needed to be a better example. I needed to be an example to follow. And we don't, we always forget who it is we're representing. Like, even if that's like a big thing outside of Christianity is like parents tell their kids all the time, you go over someone else's house, you better behave because you're representing this family. You better behave because you are, you know, like you're a reflection of me. And we, then we don't take that, that principle in our Christian walk because we feel like we have some type of blanket of covering because we have God on our side so we can act like a fool and he's just going to forgive us. Like, yeah, he might forgive you, but, like, that doesn't mean you're not going to pay the consequences for it. Like, there's always going to be consequences to pay when you screw up. And if you don't want to screw up, just follow God and learn how to be an example like him. Learn how to be what he called you to be. And that's getting in prayer. That's reading the Bible. That is, like, I mean, when you are, when you want to go out with someone, you don't just say, hey, what's their name? And then go ask them out. No, you get to know who they are. And then, so that way you, you know, can impress them and do things that they like. You know, like, oh, she likes daffodils. I'll get her some daffodils. You know, like, you learn that stuff. You're like, hey, what kind of flowers she like? You know, what kind of movies she like? Does she like to go out? Da, 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 da. What's your parents like? Are they mean? Can I even call her? You know, like we figure all that out because we take that seriously because we deem that relationship important. But we don't deem the relationship we have with God that's going to basically save our life for the rest of eternity as important. Go figure. We want to make sure we're happy in the moment, in the present. And let me tell you, as someone who is about happy 90% of the time, like 100% of that 90% is because of God. Like you have to understand, because I can get upset about, I mean, I get upset about things. Trust me, that is something I'm still working on. But I can get upset about a lot of things, like especially with, like, I mean, just going to school, oh my goodness, I can just give you a list for an hour and a half about things that could upset me. But 
I don't let it upset me. And I don't let it upset me because I'm no longer being an example if I let it upset me. If I'm just like everyone else at school complaining about everything that's wrong with my school, all they're going to know is that I agree with them, but that I don't have like any solution for the problem. I'd rather be the one guy with the solution because what's cool is I'm the only one guy with the solution. So, you know, I get to stand out for that, and I like to stand out. We all know that. But not only that, I can give credit where credit's due, and that's to God. And I can say, look, I had this solution because of my relationship with God. I was able to get through this and understand this and deal with this because of my relationship with God. And it's that easy. And people are like, People are always looking for a reason to, like, it's, it's, it's funny. At least in San Francisco they are, I feel like they are, looking for a reason to, like, reject God. Like, you don't understand. They're looking for a reason. Like, someone says God, they want to instantly attack that person and jump on them and try and, like, dispute anything they have to say before that person gets one word out. If God just comes out of their mouth, they're like, oh, target, and they zero in on them. If I don't have a stable relationship with God and those attacks come against me, I am going to crumble like a cookie. And then I'm another poor representation of God. If I'm able to, and not argue with them, but defend my God and prove them wrong through being like humble about it, prove them wrong through knowing what I'm, what I'm saying and being able to, you know, explain not not the concepts, but explain like the lifestyle that I live and have them see that I'm living a godly lifestyle. And it's not like those other people they want to try and associate with me with. Because like I said, I don't like it when people copy me, so I don't like it when people associate me with things. I'm like, you don't know me. Associate me after you know me. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to associate me with the right things. But don't associate me right now because you're going to associate me with the wrong things. And that gets, I mean... That gets people going. They, I've had multiple conversations with people trying to prove me wrong. And eventually I'll just walk away. And I don't walk away from an argument. But I walk away from stupid arguments. Because I'm like, like I said earlier, they don't want to listen. They don't want to learn. That's on them. You said what you were supposed to say. Don't stand, don't stand there repeating yourself. You know, like we, we do it. That's always like my biggest thing in arguments is I end up repeating myself. I stand there and I repeat myself like an idiot. And I get more upset about it because I'm like repeating myself. And I'm learning to apply how God's teaching me not to do that in those other aspects. But I wouldn't learn how to do that if I didn't have that relationship with him. And it's, see, it's all, it's a relationship with God is exciting to me because you get answers to things that you didn't even know you had a question about until you get the answer. You, like, you get the answer, and you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know I was struggling with that. Like, that's crazy. That's awesome. And, like, I wish things would happen. Like, I know, you know, I can guarantee you all the youth were like, I wish that would happen in math. I wish I just knew the answer. When they asked the question, you just, like, knew how to do it. Oh, school would be so much easier, right? Well, life is that much easier if you have God because he gives you all the answers. I had my, my most recent class that I just finished today was a, a sociology of art class. And we had to like do a community art project. We had to pick like a social movement and do like an art project about it. And I remember the teacher saying, look at the outline for the project because that's gonna be your Bible over the next two weeks or three weeks or whatever. And I was like, mm, not my Bible. But I get the point you're making because she's saying everything you needed to know, every question you had was going to be answered in that. So she understood what a Bible was. She misappropriated it, but she understood what a Bible was. She understood that if you use the Bible correctly, any question you ever have is going to be in there. Any concern you ever have is going to be in there. Anything you ever need to know or want to know about something, and in this case, it's our life, is going to be in there. All you need to do is read it. Like, that's what she said. She said, don't come ask me. She said, look at, the rub look at the outline first. Then if it's not on there, and she's like, I guarantee you it will be, but if it's not, then come ask me. And what do we do when we have a problem? Instantly, we either run to someone in church, or we just, like, run and start, you know, crying out to God without, 
like reading what he already told us. Like he gave us the answers. Do some work, like man up, woman up, and open the dang thing and look at it. Like it's not that difficult. I mean, especially on our phones, you don't even got to turn a page anymore. You don't even have to flip. You actually get to scroll and be like, there it is. You don't have to go to the front of the Bible and be like, what page does that start on? I remember I had to do that. But hey, look, I know where everything is in the Bible is, though. I know, like, I, that was one of our things that we had to do in Children's Church was, you know, like, what books or what are the order of the, the books of the Bible? In, like, in order. What are all the books of the Bible in order? I got, like, four wrong. I think Vanessa was the only one who got it right. I was pissed about that, okay? <laughs> I was super mad because they were like, whoever gets closest, and I was like, four, I'm in. I only got four wrong. And she goes up there and does all of them. And I was like, mm, whatever. But I, I, but I got over it, but I'm just saying, okay? If you're competitive like me, if you're competitive like me, then you would want to learn all the books of the Bible. You would want to know them in order. And so, like I said, I have always had that kind of focus on building a relationship with God. And even when I wasn't doing it, I knew that it was important, and I knew that Honestly, it was the thing that I was, like, rebelling against was having that relationship with God. And, I mean, I, looking, like I said, looking back, I saw the bad example that I set. And I was, like, I was just, like, I was honestly, like, devastated by it because I was, like, oh, my goodness. I just set people back, like, 15 steps when I could have helped everyone get, like, 15 steps forward. And... So that's why I take my relationship with God very seriously now, especially, especially because pastor asked me to work with the youth. I was like, I'm not going to repeat those same mistakes because I know that they're the ones that are going to be coming after, like, you know, next behind me. And I'm not that much older than them, but there's times when I'm their friend and there's times when I'm their youth leader and I don't try and be their friend when I'm being their youth leader. I don't ever try and be their friend when I'm being their youth leader because they're not, one, they're not gonna respect me for it. They're gonna think that, because with friends, we think we can just kind of disregard what they say because they're friends. And I'm not related to any one of them except Veronica and good luck me trying to tell her anything. <laughs> and so I can't even come from like an older brother standpoint. I, they may see me as an older brother, but they have to see me as a youth leader. When I'm being a youth leader, they have to see me as a youth leader. And we, as I'm going to say, we as adults need to always watch the example we're setting because we, our youth and our younger kids see whatever it is we do, and we hear it all the time, we don't like to hear it, but whatever it is we do, they're going to copy at some point in their life. It may not be immediate, but it may be later. They may end up, like, they see, you know, you being one way at home and one way at church, and so they're going to think, when I'm at school, I can be one way, and when I'm at church, I'll be one way. Because that was me. That's what I did. At school, I was one way, and at church, I was another. And I was like, no one knows. <sighs> Enough people knew. That's the point. Enough people knew. And let me tell you, it was not fun them knowing. And look, here's my answer to that. If you don't have, like, any dirty laundry to hide, you don't have to worry about any dirty laundry being shown or being told or talked about. So get your relationship with God and everything works out. Like, it's really not that complicated. I mean, we really want to make it complicated because we really want to make it feel like we can't achieve it so we have a way out. So we can say... Well, it's just not possible for me. I've tried, but it's not going to happen. Well, you didn't try. You tried to come up with excuses, and you succeeded in that, but you're not trying to have a relationship with God. And here's the thing. When you have a relationship with God, it's not trying to have one. You just have one. Like when you have a good relationship, like with a friend or with like a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband and wife, whatever, when you have a good, it's, yeah, there's times when it's difficult, but it's not, you don't have to try and have the relationship. You just have the relationship. And you guys may go through things. And yeah, you're going to go through things in life because God never said we wouldn't. But he's going to be there with you every single step of the way, giving you every answer you need to every question you have. And all you have to do is keep your eyes on him. And I, 
it's funny because I noticed that I walked looking up because I walked through San Francisco and everyone walks like this. And I'm the only one doing this. And so when I see someone with their head up, I'll like give them a nod, you know, make eye contact, give them the, hey, what's up, without saying, hey, what's up. And then they're like, they're all taken back because they probably haven't looked up in the past 20 minutes. And they're like, whoa, someone else is looking up too. But I'm always looking up. And that's why I see things that other people don't see. I'll say all the time, you guys see that? No. Pay attention. Gosh, pay attention. Like, I think that's why I don't like watching movies with some people because they're not watching the movie. I'm like, come on, guys. It's a movie. That's like talking over a song you want to hear. I mean, we do that during church, so maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd, but whatever. You know, we start talking, and it's not even, you're not even talking about the song. Like, I know you're not talking about the song. You're talking about something that's completely unrelated. You're like, oh my God, dude, it smells in here, or something so stupid. It's not even funny. You're just making off-the-wall comments that make no, and here's the thing, you're pulling yourself out of it. You're keeping yourself out of it, and you're like subconsciously doing it, and you're allowing yourself to do it. Like, you have to take control of your mind. Like, that, I mean, Pastor talked about that before, too, taking control of your mind. And I'm, like, you guys really got to understand, everything that I've ever, like, learned and been able to understand through the Bible is because I followed his example. Because, and he never, like, he's, he said before, and other people have said before, he never has, like, once strayed from that example. He's always had that relationship with God and been committed to God. And... I can't be comfortable with myself and say I'm a representation of him if I'm not doing the things he does. And I don't know how, if any of you can sit there and be comfortable and say you're a representation of, and this isn't him, but of God, and you're not doing the things God does. Like, I can't, I, I don't see how you can, anyone can be comfortable with themselves doing that. I really don't. And the only thing I can say is start doing what God does. And, I mean, I swear it'll change your life. Like, it will, it's just really that simple. I'm, that's, I can only keep repeating it because that's really the only thing to say. Because it's that simple. Everything else starts to just come one after the other. You just start to understand stuff when you just, like, finally stop trying to understand him with your natural mind and just understand him and believe what his word says and trust in his word and follow his word because there's a difference between like yeah i believe in it but do you act it like that's you being the example to follow is you're saying it and you're doing it we hear all the time you can talk the talk but do you walk the walk or vice versa whatever it is like we need to do both we need to walk and talk it and if you don't like pastor said and i can see it you're gonna get left behind you are seriously just gonna we are starting to move, and it's like not, we're not jogging, we're running, we're sprinting, we're taking off, we're steamrolling, and you need to like hop on because there's no way you're going to be able to catch up. It's just not going to happen, and trust me, we want you to catch up. I'm not telling you this because I want you to give up and get all upset. We want you here, but you got to want to be here yourself. Amen? Amen.